Shalom, all praise, Yahweh, Baha Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Waha Raka Kwidash, double honor to my teachers, the apostles, and the elders of the great millstone. Also, peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. Lord willing, this lesson will be edifying. This lesson is entitled, And I Will Not Meet Thee as a Man. And that comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 47, and verse 3. And it reads, Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yeah, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. And the nakedness of the mystery daughter of Babylon is being seen, is being made known to the world. Why? Because the Most High is fulfilling Amos 3 and verse 7, when it speaks about, roughly paraphrasing, the Lord power, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, surely will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. And one of those secrets is, who is the mystery daughter of Babylon? Who is the wicked that the Bible speaks of? The mystery daughter of Babylon would be America. And the wicked that the Bible speaks of will begin with the top tier elite of the so-called modern day white race, which is the world bankers, those that control the world currency. They would be the beginning of the wicked that the Bible speaks of, the modern day Edomites. All right. It says, thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yeah, thy shame shall be seen. So America is compared unto a woman. In the scripture, America is paired to that scarlet whore that sit upon many waters, which is being compared to a woman. And we all know a woman wears what? A dress to cover up her nakedness so her shame will not be seen. But the Most High have revealed the secrets unto his servants, the prophets, and America's track record is being sought up by America being ID'd as the mystery daughter of Babylon and the wicked elites are being ID'd as the wicked in the track record of the cancer of the earth, which is uh, the wicked elites in America furthering that cancer because the wicked elites run America, okay? That wickedness that the wicked elites have committed upon the soils of America is being sought up in the whole world, all right? It's knowing the history of these wicked people, okay? Which is rape, robbery, murder, and bloodshed, all right? And, and, and they are full of lies, as the scripture says, all right? And that shame is being shown by America's dress as being compared to a woman being lifted up. It says, I will take vengeance, and Yahweh Shai is going to take vengeance. He's going to pay back the wicked elites for all of the wickedness they have done. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. Yahweh Shai is not going to meet the wicked and the proud as a man as when he left. He left as being that sacrificial lamb of the Most High, being a humble man that committed himself unto the cross to shed his blood for the elect of the nation of Israel. Therefore, Israel as a whole could be saved within the kingdom of heaven that shall be placed upon earth by Yahweh Shai taking down this wicked kingdom, America, and all of the kingdoms that follow America, and establishing a, a righteous kingdom, which is the kingdom of heaven. Okay, now the scripture tells us in Acts about Yahweh Shai's uh, departure and Yahweh Shai coming back. I'm going to go straight to the point. Acts chapter 1 and verse 11, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up unto heaven? This same Yahweh Shai, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye seen him go into heaven. So Yahweh Shai was explaining to his disciples at the time, which later on became apostles of Yahweh Shai, that there were, there were going to be witnesses, all right, both in uh, Jerusalem, uh, Judea, and Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth, which is America, which explains reincarnation, if you can receive it, because we know that the disciples was a witness unto Yahweh Shai in the ancient times, in Judea, all right, in Jerusalem, and Samaria, but never the uttermost part of the earth, which is America. So the disciples are back in the reincarnation, which is souls coming back at a later date, in a later time, in another body. And these souls, which refers to the disciples, which later on became apostles, are witnesses here in the uttermost part of the earth, which is America, in these end times. They are prophesying. They are being witnesses of, of Yahweh Shah, prophesying the downfall of America and the coming of a righteous kingdom by Yahweh Shah. All right? 
And while Yahweh was explaining these things to them, he was what? Beamed up in what the scripture refers to as a cloud. All right. And a cloud is symbolically represented by a chariot of the Most High or what the world deems UFOs. Okay. So that same way that Yahweh Shai, that same manner and like manner as he was taken away, he's going to come back. All right. And as the scripture said, every eye is going to see Yahweh Shai coming back. Upon those clouds, the book of St. Matthew, chapter 25, and verse 31, and it reads, it says, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the angels, all right, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. That's right. The Son of Man is Yahweh Shai, and he's coming back. All right, and he's going to come back not as a man. He's coming back in all of the glory of the Most High, in the glory of, the, of his Father, all right, in the splendor, in a glorified state, in a super angelical force, okay, him and the, the army of heaven, which are the angels, as the scripture tells us in Second Ezra chapter 13, in verse 3 it says, and I beheld and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven, and that man is Yahweh Shai, and the thousands of heaven is the angels, the host, or the army, the Allahayim, that's coming with Yahweh Shai. And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burned that heard his voice, like as the earth faileth, all right, with the, the, the fill of the fire. Okay, let's read that again, verse 4. And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all day burned that heard his voice. Like as the earth faileth when it filleth the fire. Okay, and what is that fire? Those concentrated beams that's going to be coming out of the clouds or the chariots of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Which, which Yahweh Shai is going to be riding upon a huge fathership. All right, here in 2 Ezra 13, Ezra referred to that fathership. As well, a mountain. Okay? Verse 6, it says, But I beheld, and lo, he had graven himself a great mountain and flew up upon it. And that huge, great mountain that Ezra is seeing in the vision is that huge fathership that Yahweh Shai is going to be riding upon. All right? With the thousands of heaven. All right? Spitting out concentrated beams of fire or laser beams to what? Burn the proud and the wicked. Okay? As the scripture says in uh, the book of Baruch, chapter 4, and verse 1, Salakia, the book of Malachi, chapter 4, and verse 1, it says, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yeah, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah of host. The Lord, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shab, armies, host means armies, that it shall leave them, neither root nor branch, that it shall leave the proud and those that do wickedly, neither root nor branch. He's going to create stubble by those concentrated beams of fire and that's coming out of those chariots, accompanied by the way of 200 million intercontinental ballistic missiles. All right? Spoken of in the book of Revelation 9 and 16. All right? So let's jump to the book of Revelation chapter 19 and verse 11 it says and I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and the righteous and in righteousness he doeth judge and make war and this is speaking of Yahweh Shai riding upon that huge pure chariot alright that the scripture says white horse horse represents power okay White represents pure, being in a glorified state. And that's Yahweh Shai coming upon that huge uh, fathership. Okay? And Yahweh Shai's title is what? Faithful and true. And he's going to judge the righteous and he's going to make war, okay, with those that the Most High is going to put the Spirit upon, which are these armies, to what? Wage war against Yahweh Shai and the rest of the angels. Verse 12 it says, His eyes were as a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns. Why? Because Yahweh Shai is going to take down 
all of these armies, all right, from all of these kingdoms that's going to fight against him and establish a righteous kingdom, which is the kingdom of heaven. And he had a name written that no man knew but himself. All right. It says, verse 13, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of the Most High. All right. Which is Yahweh Shai. And why was he clothed with a vesture dipped in blood? Isaiah 63 and verse 1. It says, Who is this that cometh from Edom with, with dyed garments from Basra? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. And that's Yahweh Shai. All right. Because he's going to what? Subdue. The wicked and the proud, all right? Basra represents America. Edom, all right, is the man, all right? Esau, all right, is the man. Edom is the land. And the Edomites, beginning with the top tier elites, are the ones that Yahweh Shai is going to subdue or slay. Verse 2, Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? Verse 3, I have trodden the wine press alone, and of the people, there was none with me, for I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my remnant. And that is a metaphor for all of the bloodshed that's going to occur when Yahweh Shai subdue all of these nations that he's going to take down, that's going to be spearheaded by Russia, all right, and America, and uh, Iran, and all of these other uh, militaries that's going to gang up because the Most High is going to put the spirit upon them to fight against Yahweh Shai. Okay? Back in the book of Revelation chapter 19 and verse 13 again, and he Yahweh Shai was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the word of the Most High and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses which are those thousands of heaven which are those angels, the host all right, or the army, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. 15, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of the Almighty. And that's Yahweh Shai coming back, not to meet this world as a man, but as a super angelical force. All right, that's why the scripture tells us in Second Thessalonians, Chapter 2 and verse and verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, and these are the times that the wicked is being revealed, all right, beginning with the top tier elites of the wicked, which is the so-called modern-day white man, the Edomites, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and that's an example of Amos 3 and 7, the most high will assuredly do nothing but he revealeth his secret unto his servants the prophets and that secret is revealing these these devils by them knowing who the devil is which is starting with the top tier elites all right the physical counterpart of the spiritual being satan and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming and that's speaking of Yahweh Shai not meeting this world as a man he's going to destroy them with the brightness of his coming by Yahweh Shai riding upon a huge fathership Zapping the proud and the wicked with concentrated beams of fire or laser beams accompanied by the way of 200 million intercontinental ballistic missiles. And that's the day that we're hasting. All right. Because the elect of the nation of Israel shall be saved. The wicked and the proud is going to be subdued. Okay. So Lord willing, I pray that this made sense and that this was edifying. Shalom.